The Outsider will not be presented so that we may bring you the following special program. Now, a special program in living color on NBC. Jack Benny's birthday special with his guest stars, Lucille Ball, Dan Blocker, Dennis Day. Introducing Rovan. Special guest star, Lawrence Welk. And Anne Margaret as the Valentine Girl. Brought to you by... Texaco, on behalf of Texaco retailers and distributors in all 50 states who say, fill it up with Texaco Sky Cheap, the gasoline that can drive down the cost of driving and save you money. And now, the star of our show, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. I'm Jack Benny, and I welcome you to my special. I'm so glad you tuned in, because on tonight's show, I'm celebrating my birthday. And we'll get started in just a minute. But first... The John Hamlins of Malibu, California, are leaving this morning on a cross-country vacation. They'll be able to get whatever their car may be with the one credit card that really gets around. has the only credit card honored under the same sign in all 50 states and throughout Canada. Ask for an application at your nearby Texaco station. More and more people trust their car to the man who wears the Texaco star. I said before, <laughs> on tonight's show, I'm celebrating my birthday. And doing a show about such an important event gives me a chance to, uh, oh, well, I can't ignore it any longer. I know you're waiting for an explanation why someone else came out when I was introduced. Well, it wasn't my idea. My writers thought of it. But I'm going to take most of the credit because when they told me what they wanted to do, I liked it. <laughs> and when they told me to get someone who is hep, cool, <laughs> and a real swinging cat, I immediately thought of Lawrence Welk. <laughs> now, I wanted to talk to Welk personally, but I didn't know where he lived, you see? So I jumped into my car, bought one of those maps to movie stars' homes, <laughs> and I was on my way. But in the dark, the guy handed me an old map, and I found out that when I arrived at the address, it is now one of those places that sells fried chicken. <laughs> now, fortunately, the colonel was there. <laughs> And he told me that Lawrence Welk lived two miles up the hill. So I thanked him, licked his fingers. <laughs> he
he smiled down on me, <laughs> and I drove off. Now, when I got there, I knew I had the right place by the number on the house. A one, a two. <laughs> so I pressed the button on the electric gate, and a voice said, who is it? And I said, it's Jack Benny. Now, apparently, I pressed the wrong button because when I said, it's Jack Benny, the sprinklers came on. <laughs> So while I was standing there with my suit slowly shrinking, the colonel came up delivering an order. <laughs> so while I engaged him in conversation, I tied a message to the leg of a chicken. <laughs> Fate must have been with me because with 20 pieces of chicken in the bucket, Lawrence choked on my message. <laughs> And he agreed to be on my birthday show. I think it was awfully sweet of him. And now I would like to bring him back and have him take a bow for doing such a wonderful impersonation of him. <laughs> Lawrence Welch, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to have you. It's nice to be invited to your birthday party. Well, you're certainly welcome. Your imitation. I'll tell you, I can't get over how great you did that impersonation of him. Why, Jack, I do a lot of impersonations. You do a lot of impersonations? Certainly. Get a load of this, uh -huh. Edward G. Robinson. Edward G. Robinson? Huh? Oh, look, you guys. You keep muscling in on my territory, and I'm going to let you have it, see? <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> wow, that was great. Anybody else? I do? can also do Cary Grant. You can do Cary Grant? Let's hear it, yeah. Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> I can't get over it. But uh, look, at, I must ask you something, though. What's that? You do such great impressions. Do you do them on your own show? Oh, no. On my show, we don't take any chances. <laughs> He must be right. He's always in the top ten. Let's see, J. Paul Getty, Onassis, me. Oh, well. I better get on with the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on tonight's special... On tonight's special, <laughs> we have some wonderful guests who are here to celebrate my birthday. And I know what you're all wondering, but I'm not going to tell you. Anything you want to guess over 39, you're on your own. Anything you want to guess under 60, bless you. <laughs> but I don't care how old you think I am because Age is actually a condition of the mind. For instance, take Maurice Chevalier. He just celebrated his 80th birthday. Now, there's a man 80 years old, and with him, every little breeze still whispers Louise. <laughs> with me, I catch a cold. <laughs> Now, a lot of people who think they know my real age ask me why I don't retire. They say to me, what do you do with all your money? You don't have a yacht, you don't have a jet plane, you don't have a string of racehorses. What do you get out of all of your money? Well, the answer is simple. 7%. <laughs> I must tell you about a couple of birthday presents that I received. One was from George Burns, a friend of mine. Pardon me. Yes, Did you see some penguins? <laughs> yes, yes, they went that way. Thank you. One thing about penguins, they have no sense of direction. 
You know, on some shows, that information alone could win you a refrigerator. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on this particular show, I must say I'm very fortunate in having Jack, with... Jack, Jack. Yeah. terribly sorry to interrupt you, but I'm so embarrassed that I couldn't wait. Embarrassed about what? Well, I talked to you for 20 minutes before the show and I forgot to wish you a happy birthday. Oh. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Happy birthday, Jack. Thank you. <laughs> Lucy, wait a minute. Come here. Well, that's all I wanted to say. I know, but as long as you're out here, stay here for a minute. Well, I'm not supposed to be out oh, now. You stay anyway. Come here. <laughs> I'm glad you're on because I want to tell you how pleased I am that you're on my show. Oh, Jack, I would have been hurt if you hadn't asked me. What a ridiculous thought. <laughs> you were the first one I had in mind. Oh, come on now, Jack, let's be honest. I wasn't the first. I happen to know that you called London and tried to get Princess Margaret. <laughs> well, yes, Lucy, I'll admit it, but after all, she's rather pretty and she wouldn't hurt our rating overseas. No, that's true. And another thing, she told me she could bring her sister for the same money. You mean Queen Elizabeth? Yes. Well, that would have been a plus. I'll say, everybody loves the Queen. Yeah. Imagine having the Queen of England on my show. Yeah, and she hasn't been on television since the coronation. <laughs> That's right. And that was a daytime show. Yeah. Who was the sponsor? Well, it must have been some margarine company, because suddenly there was a crown on her head. <laughs> Say, that's good. <laughs> that wasn't even in the script. No. <laughs> Did you just think of that? No. No, last night I had dinner with Lawrence Welk, and I found it tied to the leg of a chicken. <laughs> Gee, that's funny. Funny? I almost choked on it. <laughs> Lucy, that's very strange. Well, if you think that's strange, when I rang the doorbell, the sprinklers came on. No! <laughs> okay, I'll see you after that. Isn't she marvelous? You know, she's so funny, I'm amazed she hasn't got her own show. <laughs> That's the silliest thing I'll say tonight. <laughs> oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to say, I'm very fortunate in having as one of my guests a young man with a singing voice that will absolutely thrill you. I know you've all heard about, you've heard stories about a singer having a voice so strong that merely by singing certain notes, he could create vibrations that would shatter a pane of glass. I thought that was a gag, you see. But last night, at a little gathering at my house, he sang for us. And he hit a note with such force that it broke a champagne glass. I know this is true because I was holding the glass in my hand at the time, see? And when he hit that high note, the champagne glass broke, and I got seven up all over me. <laughs> This is his first appearance on American television, Rovan. Thank you very 
much, ladies and gentlemen. Of all the great songs that are written today, this song happens to be a favorite of mine. Because to me, it expresses the, the hope of America and the heart of America and the dream that is America. And the world will be better for this That one man scorned and covered with scars Still strong with his last ounce of Great, just wonderful. And I'm glad you sang Vesta La Juba, that same song you sang at my apartment last night, you know? Well, thank you, Mr. Benny. And I also appreciate your inviting me to your house for dinner last night. It was a pleasure having you. Oh, and uh, here's a dollar for that champagne glass I broke. <laughs> oh, oh, for heaven. You don't have to do that, for heaven's sakes. No, please, Mr. Benny. I insist on paying for it. Oh. Well, then it was three dollars. <laughs> three dollars? Yes, a dollar for the glass and two dollars to have my suit clean. <laughs> the seven up was 20 cents, but ah, forget it. <laughs> now, Ravon, I was telling the audience that this is your first appearance on television. Isn't that right? No. <laughs> I once appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show. <laughs> well, on the Ed Sullivan... Well, were you on the stage or in the audience? Oh, on the stage. I'm not important enough yet to be in the audience. <laughs> well, Rovan, just keep on singing and someday you will be, you know. Gee, I hope so. I understand it pays more. You mean it pays more to be in Ed Sullivan's audience than being on a show? No, no. It pays more to be in Ed Sullivan's audience 
than being on this show. <laughs> you know, that's funny. That's a funny joke. Where'd you get it? Somebody tied it to, to the, the leg, leg of, of a chicken. chicken. I know. I know. <laughs> Mr. Bennett. Yes. Right now, I'd like to sing for you. One thing about penguins, they have no sense of direction. <laughs> now look, if you're expecting a refrigerator, forget it. <laughs> now what was it you were about to tell me? Well, Mr. Benny, since this is your birthday, yes, there's something special I'd like to sing, just for you. For me on my birthday? Yes. Would you mind sitting over here, please? Gee, yeah, I... Right here, huh? Yes, right there, please. Okay. The lyrics will tell you how we all feel about you. Gee, yeah, I didn't expect this. <laughs> Why this feeling? Why this glow? Why the thrill when you say hello? <laughs> it's a strange and tender magic you do. Mr. Wonderful, that's you. Oh, there's much more. I could say But the words keep slipping away And I'm left with only one point of view Mr. Wonderful This is a business pilot. He flies for companies. This is a private pilot. He flies for pleasure. The planes are theirs, all theirs, and they demand the best for them. That's why they touch down at Texaco Airport dealers' strategic service commands. It's like having a ground crew all their own. There are close to 600 Texaco Airport dealers around the country. All handle the best fuels and lubricants money can buy. All supply the kind of service money can't buy. All honor Texaco credit cards. The Strategic Service Command. They make the business of flying a pleasure. Another reason why more people put their trust in the Texaco Star. like to introduce my next guest, who is one of the stars of that great Western television show, Bonanza, ladies and gentlemen, Dan Blocker. Dan, it's good, it's, ooh, ooh, my bow on. 
Dan, in the first place, I want to tell you I'm glad you're here with me. Well, Jack, it's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. And Dan, I want to, I don't have to tell you what a fan I am of yours. In fact, the other the other day, I went to, to the set where you were shooting one of your Bonanza episodes. I never saw such action in my life. You pulled a guy out of his chair, hit him with such force, he flew over the table, hit the bar, bounced back across the room. Then you picked him up and threw him right through a plate glass window. Gee, he must have been, he must have been a great stuntman. In uh, fact, that wasn't a stuntman that I hit, it was my director. <laughs> Your director? Yeah, you see, he wanted me to do a lot of violence in a scene, and I just, I just don't believe in that. <laughs> Imagine an actor hitting a director. In my last picture, the director hit me. <laughs> Sometimes I slap back, you know. But Dan, how come you talk about being nonviolent? And yet you wear two guns. Oh, I wouldn't be without them, Jack. What? Oh, no, we Cartwrights are always ready. We're always prepared. Mm -hmm. If a bad guy comes into town and starts some trouble, mm -hmm. we don't hesitate. We draw. Yeah. We aim. Yeah. We fire. <laughs> a feather? Yeah. You see, on the Ponderosa, we tickle him to death. <laughs> well, I'll admit, when a guy dies laughing, you can't call it violence. <laughs> Where'd you get an idea like that? The Harper Valley PTA. <laughs> oh. Well, tell me, Dan, I want to ask you something. How long have you been with Bonanza? Jack Winner, 10th year. Imagine, 10 years. Yes, yes, and I'm very grateful. It's given me everything that I ever wanted. Well, that's nice. And I understand, Dan, you live very modestly. That's right, Jack. We have a small ranch out in the valley where we raise Black Angus cattle. It's been just wonderful. And I'd be the happiest man in the world except for one thing. What's that? Well, you see, every time we drill for water, mm -hmm. we strike oil. <laughs> Off. <laughs> Say it is. I want water for my cattle. I don't want oil. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Dan, look at I got an idea that might solve your whole problem. Yeah, what? What is it? I'll supply your cattle with bottled water, and you give me that nasty old oil. <laughs> How about that? It's a deal, Jack. Ooh. My bow arm. Well, with all that oil, I won't need it anymore. Jack, right. let's quit stalling. Now, let me have it. Let you have what? Jack, I know why you invited me to be on your show. I weigh 280 pounds, and you want to use all of those old fat jokes that you used to use on Don Wilson on me. Dan, I had no intention of doing that. No? You mean, you're not gonna ask me if these are all my chins, or am I just chewing on a Venetian blind? <laughs> of course not. I wouldn't do that to you. How about where you tell me I have to move out of Long Beach to make room for the Queen Mary? <laughs> I never did say that to Don Wilson. <laughs> I know, Jack. I, I made that one up myself. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> Well, Dan, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I had no intention of using those jokes on you. Now, in the first place, they wouldn't fit. They're perfect for Don Wilson because he really is a sort of a big, fat tub of lard. <laughs> but hold it just a minute, Dan. Hold it just a minute. I, I didn't know Don Wilson was in the audience. Jack Benny, you got a lot of nerve. I didn't mind it when I was working for you. You make all those lousy jokes about my size, about my being fat. Why, when I had an operation, you told everybody they took out my stomach and put in a deep freeze. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, you stay out of this, Buster. I didn't mind 
it then, but you no longer have that privilege. Don. It's all just a joke. I mean, like, like Jack's stinginess. Well, he ought to make that very clear. All right, I will, Don. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Wilson is not fat. He actually weighs 97 pounds. <laughs> but he's been very cleverly passing himself off as a big tub of lard. There you go again. There you go again. Now, Jack, you've just got to apologize to me. All right, Don, you're right. You are right. I'll apologize. I'll not only apologize to you in person, but I'll even put it in writing and send it to your home in Long Beach. But I don't live there any longer. You don't? No. They made me move to make room for the Queen Mary. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Wilson. That's my joke. <laughs> yeah, I know. I heard you tell it up at Harper Valley. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I got another one. I got oh, one. save it, save it, save it, Dan. Come on over here a minute, Dan. Yeah. I want to talk to you. I got a great idea, Dan. Yeah. Why don't you and I do an act together where we tell fat jokes about each other? Hey, that's a marvelous idea, Doc. Yeah, just you and I. Huh? Right, oh, right. we don't need that old man. <laughs> My goodness, they tilted the stage. <laughs> but you know, it was nice seeing Don Wilson again. We haven't seen him in about three years. In fact, the last time I saw him... Skates? Well, he must have gotten them for his birthday. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I wanted Dan Blocker to be on this, on this show. Hello, Mr. Benny. Remember us? Well, of course I do. I met you girls on my last show. Your father has a Texaco station. Uh-huh. Do you remember what we told you the last time, Mr. Benny? What's that? Sky Chief Gasoline can drive down the cost of driving. Oh, yes, of course. And that can save you money. Mmm. And that's because Sky Chief keeps deposits from building up on valves better than any other leading gasoline. I remember. I remember. Since tonight is your birthday, our daddy asked us to give you this present. Oh, Oh, my. It's an invitation to come in for a free tank full of Texaco Sky Chief gasoline. Thank you. Our daddy gave it to you because you're the only man who buys one gallon at a time. He'll try anything to get you to fill up. I, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, Mr. Benny, how old are you now? <laughs> well... Now, why don't you... How old do you think I am? Oh, I don't know. 41, 42. Well, honey, that's awfully sweet of you, but I'm a little bit older than that. Guess again. 75. <laughs> For products you can trust. You can trust your car to the man who wears the star. The big, bright Texaco star. End of commercial? End of commercial. <laughs> yeah. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I wanted Dan Blocker to be on this show 
because I thought I was going to do a satire on a Western. Then I realized it is almost impossible to do it because a Western itself is a satire. And the stories are always the same. A couple of characters will step out of the saloon. The wind will be blowing. A lonely tumbleweed will come rolling down the street. One tumbleweed, you see. Then, and you'll recognize the tumbleweeds. Been in a lot of westerns. <laughs> then there's a bad guy that comes in. You know, the tough guy. He always has a rough nickname, a tough, like, dead eye. Or the sundown kid or Ringo. <laughs> now, why did he come into town? He's gunning for the sheriff. And it's always for the same reason. The sheriff killed his brother. <laughs> it's never a cousin. It's never an uncle or a nephew. It's always a brother. Remember that when you go to see a Western. Eventually, the bad guy finds the sheriff, and there's a shootout, which is the opposite of a love-in. <laughs> now, whoever gets shot, they just let him lie there. They never send for a doctor. <laughs> you folks have seen that a million times. A crowd gathers, but nobody sends for a doctor. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. Now, now you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Awfully quiet town, ain't it? Yeah. I don't blame the folks for staying off the streets after what happened in Dodge City last night. Well, the sheriff was right. The kid had it coming to him. Remember what I told you? That tumbleweed has made a fortune in pictures. <laughs> That's the fellow I was telling you about, the bad guy. Yes, sir? You got a telegram there for me? What's your name? Ringo. Ringo, huh? Johnny Ringo. Hmm. There's a telegram for Deadeye. One for the sundown kid. Nothing for Ringo. Nothing for Ringo, huh? Nope. Uh, look under Irving Pinkus. <laughs> Irving Pinkus? That I don't understand at all. Where's your sheriff at? Uh, he's uh, in his office. Go tell him that Ringo wants to see him. Ringo? Yes, sir. Get a load of this. Wait, folks, wait till you see this. You want to see me, Ringo? All right, Sheriff. Go for your gun. What for? Because I'm going to kill you. Why? Because you killed my brother. What did I tell you? Well, I killed your brother. Because your brother killed my brother. Well, my brother had every reason in the world to kill your brother because your brother said oh, my brother... Oh, shut up. <laughs> it's always a brother. All right, Sheriff. When I count to three, you draw one. I get it over with three. <laughs> You hurt bad, Sheriff? <laughs> we'll catch that Ringo if it's the last thing we ever do. You're darn right we will. Well, it's about time somebody cleaned this town up. Send for a doctor. <laughs> we'll form a posse and start out in the morning. Send for a doctor. <laughs> With men 
something like Ringo around. This town ain't safe anymore. I'll say it ain't safe. Wouldn't you think that somebody would call a doctor? <laughs> now, please, call a doctor. <laughs> Who will we get for the next sheriff? Uh, uh, we'd better wire Dodge City. Yeah. Wait a minute. The big tub of lard isn't dead yet. <laughs> call a doctor. <laughs> See what I told you? It happens all the time. Now, now here's a Western situation I never believed, and that is where the five Dalton brothers, all deadly killers, have just broken out of jail and are heading for town to kill the sheriff, who sent them to prison, and he is ready for them. Now, get a load of this if you want to see something. Sheriff? Well, Sheriff, <laughs> what is it? The five Dalton brothers are heading this way by train. I know that, Zeke. That's why I'm going down to the railroad station. Please, <laughs> Sheriff, that's suicide. They'll be here at high noon from Phoenix. I know that's why I'm getting on the 11 o'clock train to Tulsa. <laughs> a one, a two. <laughs> You know, I hate to see him go. He's my kind of a sheriff. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, another thing you always see in Westerns is the stagecoach that has been on the way for 35 days, over 2,000 miles of desert and dusty mountain roads. When the passengers step out, the men will be filthy dirty, but the girls, will be as fresh as a daisy. <laughs> as if she has just stepped out of a shower. <laughs> Didn't I tell you, fresh as a day. <laughs> oh, my God, it's hot. Oh. <laughs> what happened to the water? I used it to take a shower. <laughs> we used all our water to take a shower. Yeah, now you're complaining, but while I was taking it, you were whistling and applauding. <laughs> all right, everybody out of my way. If you know what's good for you, come on. Wow. You're a new gal in town, and you're beautiful. I want a kiss. Stay away from me. Oh, now, come on, little lady. Give me a kiss, huh? I warn you, stay away from me. Oh, now... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has gone far enough. I better get into this. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy. Are you the new school, ma'am? Yes, I came all the way from Boston, and I was told I would be met by the sheriff. Well, little lady, I got some bad news for you. The sheriff was shot by Ringo. Ringo? That's my brother. Your brother? What's your name? Priscilla Pincus. <laughs> Wait, folks, you haven't heard anything yet. <laughs> so you're Priscilla Pincus, the new school marm, eh? Yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. You're Lucille Latour. I remember seeing you when you were singing and dancing on a riverboat on the Mississippi. Oh, please, please don't give me away. I came out west to start a new life and forget the past. Forget the past? Are you kidding? You were sensational. You were one of the greatest performers I've ever heard. You really mean it? Mean it? I'll say I mean it. Let's see, what was that number you used to do? There's a cue for a song if I ever heard one. <laughs> The minute you walk 
walked in the joint I could see that you were men of distinction Real big spenders Good looking, so refined Wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind So let me get right to the point I don't pop my cork for every guy I see you own a boat, you'll be happy to know there are more Texaco marinas than any other kind. It's another reason more and more people put their trust in the Texaco Star. Hi, Joe. Oh, it's you, Mr. Benny. Happy birthday. Thank you. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. I'm a little tired, that's all. Oh. Good night. Good night, Joe. Good night. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yeah? I have to run this vacuum cleaner. Would you mind throwing that switch for me, please? No, no, of course. It's a birthday party, a surprise party for me. I can't, I can't get <laughs> Send for a doctor. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Benny. Ah, uh, Dan. Dennis Day. Dennis, I haven't seen you in so long. How have you been? Oh, fine, thank you. Hey, you look wonderful, too. Well, thanks. What are you doing here? Well, I came to wish you a happy birthday. And here's a present. Oh, isn't that sweet? Gee, Dennis, I haven't seen you in such a... What is this, I wonder? What is it? Now it's a broken cup. <laughs> oh, 
I'm sorry. Really, I... Jack, that's such a beautiful cake. Let's eat it. Well, wait a minute. Let me catch my breath, for heaven's sake. I... Jack, I what? have a marvelous gift for you. I think you're going to uh... love it. Oh, this is just wonderful. What, what is this? That's a charm from the Ponderosa. Uh, it's beautiful. But what is it? Well, that is the wisdom tooth of an enraged buffalo. <laughs> Well, thank you, Dad. I'll always keep it because I know I won't be able to give it away. <laughs> I gave him a broken cup. I said I was sorry. <laughs> Jack, Jack, we all have presents for you, but why don't you open them after you cut the birthday cake? Yeah. That's a good idea, and I'll start the bubble machine. <laughs> oh, that's oh, wonderful. Everything. That's really wonderful. Well, I'm easy with that now. Thank you. I brought you a little present. It's a combination birthday present and Valentine's present. Oh, it's beautiful. Jack, you know, I've been working on this thing for days and nights, night and day, day and night, hammering, <laughs> soldering, molding. And do you realize that for the last three hours I've been in there working like a dog? Well, Jerry, you shouldn't have done that. Imagine being inside there for three hours. <laughs> Three hours you've been in there with Jerry Lewis? What have you been doing? Well, we've been celebrating your birthday. <laughs> well, my birthday, for heaven's sake, that was three days ago. That's when we started celebrating. <laughs> Come on, Jack, cut the cake. I'm hungry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, at, before we cut the cake, I want Rovan to sing my favorite song, and I want to accompany him on my violin. Oh. Wait a minute, it's my birthday and it's my party. I'm gonna do what I want. Don, will you get my violin, please? The Stradivarius. Now, Don't just wait. a minute, Mr. Benny. I've known you a lot longer than he has, and if anybody's gonna sing, it's gonna be me. Yeah. yeah. But Dennis, Dennis, wait a minute. Rovan is my guest. I don't care. I sing as good as he does. Oh, thank you, Don. Dennis, don't be ridiculous. Jack, what? if he wants to sing, let him. Yeah! yeah. Okay, kid, what do you want to sing? Your favorite number, Cuando Caliente el Sol. Okay, all right. I gave him a broken cup. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, between Dennis Day and those penguins... Hold on, Mr. Benny. I've, huh? It's time to do the commercial. Oh, oh, the commercial. Yes. Oh, Here's fine. the coffee for you to rehearse while we set the stage. Thank you. Bring the microphone in. All right, lights up. Let's bring the sets in. Let's see. Fill up with Texaco Sky Chief because it can drive down the cost of driving. It can save you money. So you really should fill up. 
Remember, we'll pay you to fill up because Sky Chief keeps deposits from building up on valves better than any other leading gasoline. So ladies and gentlemen, get Texaco Sky Chief and tell, tell the man to fill it up. Yes, sir, Mr. Benny, fill it up. <laughs> One gallon, please. <laughs> Well, that's it, folks. But somebody handed me a wire just as I came on from my very good friend, George Burns. It says here, uh, Dear Jack, happy birthday, and I... W I didn't know you could send a wire like this. <laughs> right. Anyway, I want to thank all of my guests for being on my show. And Lucy, Lucy, come back here a minute, will you please? <laughs> Lucy, now that the show is over, how about going out and having a little drink with me? Why, Jack Benny, I'm surprised at you. You're a happily married man, and I'm a happily married woman. How could you make a suggestion like that? Well, I just asked you to go out and have a little drink with me, that's all. Oh, sure, it sounds innocent enough, but it becomes a secret rendezvous in the dimly lit cocktail lounge with romantic music playing in the background. Really, I'm surprised at you, Jack. What would Mary think? Well, Mary's coming with us. Then forget it. <laughs> well, that's my show for tonight, and I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you all for coming to my birthday party. Jack Benny's birthday special has been brought to you by... Texaco! Makers of Texaco Sky Chief. The gasoline that can drive down the cost of driving. And save you money. So fill it up, Jack. Mr. Benny. More and more people trust their car to the man who wears the Texaco star. This Sunday, beginning at 6.30, 5.30 Central Time, a glowing ballet version of a timeless classic, Little Women, narrated by Geraldine Page.